We're now going to learn about the mean value theorem, which is very similar to Rayleigh's theorem. Assuming that you just watched the Rayleigh's theorem video, um, Rayleigh's theorem said that if we have two y values that are equal and the function is continuous and differentiable, that at some point between those two functions, at least one time, we're going to have a horizontal tangent line. So that's what we just talked about. In the mean value theorem, we're still going to have a continuous and differentiable function, and we'll still have to show that that is true. But what it's saying now is we don't need f of a to equal f of b. We're saying that the slope of a line, um, the slope of the line created by the endpoints of the interval. So on my picture, that's this line right here, that this slope at some point in the interval is going to equal the tangent line of the function at some point. So we're going to be finding that point C. So we still have to show that it's continuous and differentiable, but now we're going to be using the slope formula. And remember, this is just the regular slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So using the same picture that we just used on our last slide, let's take a look at that particular example. The first thing I would have to do is verify the NVT can be used. That's the mean value theorem. So since f of x or since f is uh, a polynomial, a polynomial, it is both differentiable and continuous. So MVT applies. So that is the first step. Verify the MVT can be used. I've said it's polynomial, therefore continuous and differentiable. Now I want to find the values of C which satisfy the MVT on the interval 1 to 4. So again, how do I do that? Well, I need to find um, the values F of 1, so F of A, and f of b, so f of 4, and I need to find f prime of x. So I'm going to do all of that before I really get started. f of 1 means take the regular function and plug in 1. So 1 squared minus 3 times 1, which is negative 2. So obviously I already knew it was 1, negative 2 because I graphed it, but normally you would not. 4 says 4 squared or 16. Oops minus 3 times 4, so 16 minus 12, which is 4. Again, that matches with what I've graphed, 4 comma 4. So again, this is just the point 1 comma negative 2. This is the point 4 comma 4. And then f prime of x is just the derivative of this function, which is 2x minus 3. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mean value theorem that says f prime of c is going to be equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a, which says essentially find the slope using those two points and then set it equal to the derivative and find the value of c. So I'm going to take 2x minus 3, that's f prime of x, and I'm going to solve for c, is equal to, and now I'm just going to find the slope between those two points. 4 minus negative 2 and 4 minus 1. So 2x minus 3 equals 6 over 3. So 2x minus 3 is equal to 2. Add 3 to each side. 2x is equal to 5. Divide by 2. x is equal to 5 halves. Now, what that's saying is at 5 halves, which is right here, that is the point at which we're going to have a tangent line that has the same slope as the line created by the endpoints of the function. And we can see based on the graph that that is in fact true. Let's take a look at another question and notice this one is not a polynomial function. So what I'm going to do now is think about the fact that this is a rational function and what do I know about rational functions? The denominator cannot equal zero. So what I know about this function is that x 
cannot equal zero because otherwise this would be zero and that's not okay. So even though this is not polynomial, I'm going to say f is discontinuous at x equals zero, but since zero doesn't fall in the interval negative, I'm sorry, positive one to five, f is continuous and differentiable on one five. So I'm saying that yes, in fact, this is a continuous differentiable function, even though it's not everywhere, it's only on one five and that I care about. So we're okay. Now, step two is find all the values of C. So again, I'm going to do it in the same fashion I did the last one. I'm going to find f of one, f of five, and f prime of x. Uh, some people like to do, you know, in a different order, do more all together in the equation. I like to just sort of separate it out like this. So f of one, excuse me, would be three minus five over one, which is three minus five or negative two f of 5 would be 3 minus 5 over 5, so 3 minus 1, which is 2. And then f prime of x, again, think about f of x as being 3 minus 5 and then x to the negative 1. That might help you to find the derivative. The derivative of 3 is 0, so I don't have to worry about that. So the derivative of negative 5x to the negative 1 is positive 5 x to the negative 2, which of course is 5 over x squared. Now from here, I'm going to use the formula. I'm going to say that 5 over x squared, which is of course f prime of c, and I'm going to solve for x to find c, and then I'm going to take f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So I'm going to take Again, this is 5 comma 2 as an ordered pair. This is 1 comma negative 2 as an ordered pair. So I'm going to take 2 minus negative 2 and 5 minus 1. So 5 over x squared is equal to 4 over 4 or 1. So 5 over x squared is equal to 1. Multiply each side by x squared. x squared is equal to 5. So x is equal to plus or minus radical 5. However, remember that I'm dealing only within the interval 1 to 5. So I don't care about the negative square root of 5 because that's obviously a negative value and not between 1 and 5. So therefore, c is equal to positive radical 5. So that's the only value of c which satisfies the MBT. For your last practice, I'm going to have you try this one on your own, and I've asked, actually asked you to do three separate things instead of two. So the first thing is verify the mean value theorem can be used, which we have already practiced together. The second thing, find all the values of C, which satisfy the MVT on the interval, and the interval is given, so that's two. Three says, hey, just in case you've forgotten how to do it, let's practice how to find the equation of the tangent line. So we're going to do all of that, but I'd like you to get as far as you can on your own first. So press pause, try that question. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So again, the first thing is this is a polynomial function. So one, uh, we don't have to number it, since f is polynomial, it is continuous and differentiable. So MVT applies. A lot of people skip that step, and I hate it when they do because I have to take points off, so don't skip that step. You have to verify that this is true, and therefore the mean value theorem can be used. Step two says, okay, now do it and find C. So how do I do it? Well, again, I'm going to use that same um, method that I've used up to this point. I'm going to find all three of these values to make my computations easier f of negative 1 would be negative, negative 1 squared plus 5. So be really careful here with your order of operations. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, 
but I've got this negative on the outside. So even though I have positive 1, I now have to negate it to get negative 1 plus 5, which is 4. Same thing with 2. This is negative and then 2 squared. So 2 squared is 4, but now I'm making it negative. So negative 4 plus 5, which is 1. And then, of course, f prime of x is negative 2x. So now I'm going to find the slope. And again, if it helps you to write these as ordered pairs so that you don't get confused, feel free to do that. So I'm going to set the derivative to x equal to, then I'm going to take 1 minus 4 and 2 minus negative 1. So negative 2x is equal to negative 3 over positive 3, which of course is negative 1. Now I'm going to stop right there for just a minute. This tells me, because this is going to come into play, this tells me the slope of the tangent line. So that's going to come into play in just a moment. So before I divide by negative 2 on each side, I just want to verify that is, in fact, the slope of the tangent line. So now I'm going to divide each side by negative 2 to get x is 1 half. x is 1 half is the x value of a point on the tangent line. Now, step three says find the equation of the tangent line through c. Now, we hopefully remember that in order to do that, we're going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So I just found the slope is negative 1. And obviously, this is y and this is x. And I've just found that x is 1 half, but I don't know y1. So before I can do anything more, I have to go ahead and find f of 1 half. So again, not f prime of 1 half, but f of 1 half. I need to find what is the y value when x is 1 half. So that would be negative and then 1 half squared plus 5. Negative 1 half squared is 1 fourth and then make it negative. So negative 1 fourth plus 5. So I can write that as 4.75 or, you know, 19 fourths or whatever, however you want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just use 4.75 uh, just since I already wrote it that way. So minus 4.75. In terms of decimals and fractions, typically we would write them as fractions, but when they're nice decimals, again, I'm going to change that 1 half to 0.5 just to make them both in the same format. Um, as long as it's not like a, a third, don't write a third as a decimal or you'll get in trouble. But if it's a nice um, terminating decimal, feel free to use a decimal. So now I'm going to say y minus 4.75 is equal to, I'm going to distribute negative 1, so that's negative x, and then plus 0.5. And now I'm going to add 4.75 to each side, so y is equal to negative x plus 0.5. 5.25. So let's take a look. Here was my original function. y is equal to negative x squared plus 5. And now I'm finding the slope of the tangent function. And the slope of the function, again, is negative 1. And this is the equation of that line, which is y is equal to negative x plus 5.25. Up next, we're going to take a look at increasing and decreasing functions and how the derivative can help us with that.